everyone and welcome to Tales from the Tavern, the official Sea of Thieves podcast. I'm here joined by this motley crew again uh, for some more stories from the studio. Um, first of all, we'd just like to mention that the video series uh, we have, Short Haul and Inside Story, is up online and you can check out all this month. Uh, we're talking about audio and music and the, uh, from the other music department, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, and yeah, you can go back and listen to um, three of our podcasts now back on the YouTube channel or on any of the reputable... SoundCloud or reputable podcast, podcast apps. apps. <laughs> yeah. And if it's not on an app that you use, let us know and we'll see about getting it on there. And as you can tell, um, we've went all out for Halloween um, on this. <laughs> I'm wearing this black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, suitably themed. Um <laughs> which we thought about five minutes before we came on air that um, this is actually Halloween. Uh, we're recording it on. Um, yes, so we're going to jump straight into it um, and introduce everyone around the table, as we usually do. Uh, yeah, Joni, executive producer. I'm Mike Chapman, lead designer. Uh, John McFarlane, community video manager. Emma Bridal, social media manager. Uh, Cameron Thomas. <laughs> Why? Sorry, he's just, John, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Um, Cameron Thomas, uh, community manager. I'm I sorry, you just guys. saw yourself with a <laughs> no, no, I'm so John, John. We'll see if he's jester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What, 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 Strong did, man. Yeah. yeah. What did Chad call me on the? Uh, or DK Vine oh. called me on the on the um, Twitter, which wasn't no, true at all. You're the brains. Yeah. Of the community team. Yeah, I'd like to call. Uh, yeah, I like to think of myself. As I'm the brain. heart. Bobby's yeah. the brawn. <clears throat> I brawn. can't. Yeah. Really? He was thrilled. He really? Loved, he loved that. Yeah. I held in saying something really nasty then, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> no, it'll be, be a test to see if yeah. you listen. <laughs> it just made me think of Captain Planet, which was. Uh, that They're making a movie of it. Definitely. Did oh, you yeah, we see had a conversation about that. Yeah. Day, yeah, we were all singing the theme tune. They're making a Captain, Captain Planet, Planet movie. movie. Mm. Tangent. Mm. Wow. Well, sorry about that. That's yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're going to jump straight to you, Emma, talking about community, like what we got from the community this week, um, this month. Okay. Uh, big thing is the Sea of Thieves subreddit got a bit of a makeover. I'm guessing you've all seen it. Yes, yeah. yes. Cool. <clears throat> it's really cool. So thank you to the mods Swish. for doing that. Yeah, but the thing is now your flair, whatever, doesn't show up quite as well. So oh. it's now not as valuable. So mm. Mods, could we maybe change the <laughs> colour on the flare, please? It's not as shiny. An animated flare. <laughs> Can't do that. Or maybe no. you can. I've not seen it done. Mm. Challenge to the mods. Yeah. yeah. Be good. So yeah, Wister, Joe drops in. You drop in, don't you? I, I on lurk. Reddit, you lurk. I lurk. I drop in. Bobby drops in. So the, we're in there taking a look. I get banned, like I said last time. All the time. Why? <laughs> Why? Why you you get I, don't, I just have to go in, like not log in and just browse. Ah. Yeah. I don't know why. John's not allowed on Reddit. Well. You know what I do, really though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, voting closes today for the Golden Joysticks, where we've been nominated for the most wanted game. Um, so please vote. If you, if you get to this in time, but um, it's really cool to be nominated for a golden you know, joystick. We're not. Does it the, close the, today the voting closes today, out? Halloween, the day this is going out. So if you can vote, if you have already voted, thank you very much. Um, pretty cool to be nominated for an award yeah. for a golden <coughs> joystick, and we're not even out yet. Isn't that a so. requirement of most anticipated game? Yes, I would imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in general, because they're going to award. <laughs> forums. forums 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 yes uh forums uh, they've been um they've been going well like uh you know uh last uh last podcast we, we were speaking about the deckhands mm -hmm. um and that's been going well like uh, actually last week i think it was um we found a way to allow the deckhands to become uh, moderators so oh. we've given them some uh, moderator privileges and that's been going really well um and they've just been doing a really good job of just, you know, um, I don't want to say policing the forums because that keeping sounds a bit... Keeping it clean. Keeping it clean, yeah. They've been doing a yeah. good job of keeping it clean and, you know, um, like, uh, you know, getting rid of duplicate threads. And um, I don't know if you've seen uh, Catru Walker. Anyone from it? You know Catru mm -hmm. Walker? Yeah. Yeah, she's put up a really good thread um, with just the massive info dump of everything on CFDs, like links, videos, articles, everything, information. Yeah, it's, it's a really, really, really good thread. So, she yeah. got to it before you could then. Yeah. 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 They're gonna put me out of a job those deck hands, but you Aww. know what? <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, it's been going well. Yeah. Really, really good. So we're just ticking over this month. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of big releases, so I think it's people have been slightly year, distracted. Yeah. 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 Games with gold. Oh yeah. Um so Major Nelson just 
this in the last hour announced games with gold for next month and um, one of them is one of them's the secret of monkey island special edition mm. i was actually playing, game. i was playing it over the weekend oh, i've never played it okay unsurprisingly i've never pl- i've <laughs> not played really anything classic <laughs> yeah we'll save that for our fair yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it off <laughs> sorry <laughs> Yeah, you. Which it's one could is be that? worse. Sorry, which one is that? First one. The first one, mm. but what? The the, the uh, remastered edition for uh, Xbox. Okay. It came on 360. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's got kind of the voiceovers and the prettier kind of HD visuals. Right, but it's mm. like basically the Amiga one. Yeah, you can twitch back, like toggle uh, back by pressing the back button. I've not played that cool. one either. There you go, get mm-hmm. it, games but of gold. Played it on the Amiga, I think. I played one of them on the Amiga. It had four discs. It's it's first one. First, first one. first one. The second yeah. one had eleven, 11 discs. Yeah. Mm. I don't know what an Amiga is. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Sounds like a cute Pokemon. Yeah. An Amiga. <laughs> you, know, you know, my Amiga. One of the discs, one of one of the floppy discs, got stuck in, and uh, the and the the cover thing got stuck in there. So when I came pulled it out, the, the cover, the kind of disc or the what you, the dust cover thing, you know, yes. the bit that yep. flicks back yep. forward. Yep. So then I had to, as a child, rip off all of those from every single disc I had, just so I could carry on playing, because <laughs> it was stuck inside, wedged inside. <laughs> <laughs> so I ruined wow. every single game I had. Just so that oh I could play God. them, <laughs> yeah, including Monkey Island and everything else. What's all the resale value of them? As a not forward thinking no. 10 year old. <laughs> no, it's terrible. So it's worth trying then? Definitely try it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll you, pick up. I wouldn't imagine you would have ripped any of this stuff off your. Um, no, I imagine Mike, even yeah. as a child, oh, bought God, no. two copies got... of every game, yeah. one of which he kept <laughs> sealed and one of which he actually played. I've still got them. I've still got the big box <laughs> versions, Pride of Place, in the, in the games library. First three months. Your game, arms. you have a games library. Oh yeah. Oh, fancy. Are you oh, most, most gamers do right? You got. No, you don't display. I them have like an place. IKEA unit. They're all shoved in there somewhere. <laughs> well, that's what I mean by I say games library. Okay. I don't mean. <laughs> I don't mean like ornate bookcases. Yeah. Oh, it's got a step ladder. No, the step ladder. Like, uh, <laughs> it's got yeah. one of those. You can if, ride it round. Yeah, and if you go to Monkey yeah, Island too, and then just do like that, it opens a secret passage mm, where fancy. the uh, there's a pirate ship in a cave. <laughs> that's a film. <laughs> <laughs> Stop asking me questions. Okay. <laughs> How many times did you play through Monkey Island? Uh, I probably still play through once a year. Mm. So you just yeah. do. Brush it's up. a great. G- they're great games. It's obviously now it's mostly nostalgia, but they're great games. Like still really funny. The world's fantastic. Great characters. Cool. Yeah. Cool classics. Like yeah, cool classics. Free. From mm-hmm. November the first. Yeah. You're just a mug for pain. Pain for it online now that you've now it's in games for gold. <laughs> that I should have waited. Head on <laughs> six years. <laughs> Just to save the pen. Just itching, staring longingly. Yeah. Maybe you'll get on Games for Gold one day. Like. I'm hoping one day it might come on together. <laughs> the time has come. I think it's one of those games I've, I, I do actually have, like, bought, like, in those, the sales that you have, and then, like, as these things become backwards compatible, I just notice them in the ready to install queue just popping mm. up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did buy That's that. Great. And, and your backlog's yeah. just piled up and up and up and up. And, yeah. 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 It's good to play Red Dead again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you didn't like, did you? No. I got, I think Graham Boyd was ready to fight me. What I said <laughs> was... Well, I, I've waited to bring it up. I, <laughs> until now. I tried it, but I, I'm still on the bit with, on the ranch with the lady, what's her name? Bobby. At yeah. the very start. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far. So everyone said, once you get past that bit, it gets really good. And mm. I just said, I don't think I've played it long enough to get to the good part. And people misinterpreted that as me saying it was rubbish. And people got really angry on Twitter. Mm. So I have no opinion on it yet. I need to stick with it. I'm really rubbish at horse riding. I keep riding it into buildings and things. Well, me and Forza like Horizon, that. you know, like when you bowl with the, the sides up. Mine oh, yeah. just goes like this. That's how I drive in Forza Horizon. It's like <laughs> bouncing off this wall stuff. Not whole in whole. real life, obviously. Not no. in real life. In real life, I'm a very safe driver. But, That's yeah. all right. That's good. That's yeah. Good. So Red Dead, and uh, so you don't get people upset about Red Dead and bacon on... Oh, I've got, de- got death threats over bacon, but let's not bring that up yeah. again. <laughs> bacon. <laughs> yes. I'm a vegetarian. I said I never really liked bacon anyway before I became a good vegetarian. I became a vegetarian. A maybe, I hadn't had the, <laughs> maybe I hadn't had the good bacon and people sent me disclosure. death threats. Full disclosure. On I Twitter. got death threats. People thought I should be buried alive amongst other things. <coughs> a lot of bacon super fans out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 People take it very seriously apparently. So. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that makes, yeah. On that note... Uh, Let's jump over to you guys on updates on what's happening in the studio. 
Mm. What's happening in the studio? Well, we, we just did our second alpha playtest um, internal, um, you know, again with Xbox employees, which was mm -hmm. really cool. Actually. Um, so we've been like we, we took the kind of results of the first one and in terms of when we did it. And so we, we didn't schedule it over a Seattle Seahawks NFL game this time, mm -hmm. um, which was a win. Um, but we, we were doing it in terms of our communications out to people. So the emails we sent out um, actually like allowed people to add a calendar invite from the email and everything. So we're just yeah. trying to improve our kind of um, inviting of players in because that's a really important part of if you're going to run tests like this then communicating to people what's in it why you'd want to come and play etc and so we kind of doubled our play account this time didn't we in terms of people who actually came and played it which was really cool that was a really good win um, and I think they've just been doing a post-mortem I think you were in that um, yep, that's where just talking was. about yeah yeah um, like what went well and what we want to improve again um, yeah. but yeah really getting into that rhythm of kind of getting a regular release out getting an audience in, yeah. having people come in and give us feedback and fill out surveys and all that kind of stuff, all in preparation for when we can actually get this into real players' hands beyond mm -hmm. this way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, really, really cool kind of steps forward for us as a, as a studio, right? And we got it, like, like a lot better, basically, with our second one than we did with our first, yeah. and hopefully we'll keep doing that. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah sure. Um, so, yeah, it's exciting time. It's really I think it's cool. like... Like even when you think about the playtest like that, it's like trying to like steer a massive ship, like a whole studio around the idea of like the way a game is released is such a difficult process. Like it's, it's that was a really tortured analogy. Hold on, so, <laughs> I'm not you, really sure what you, you're are saying. Are you talking about steering a shipping game or our studio is a ship? <laughs> our studio is a ship. Our okay. is a ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's like, try, <laughs> carry, carry it's like trying to. Trying to steer that ship into like a new direction. But it's of, an like, unsinkable ship, right? Yeah, just, unsinkable. Just, yeah, yeah, of course, okay. of course. But um, <laughs> like the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Much deadpan expression as well. And it went, <laughs> and it went more bit. Will the lifeboat be seated according yeah. to class? <laughs> You're ripping this poor analogy. Are you all right? Women and children not too first. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sad. <laughs> Yeah. So what was the what were we saying? Oh, I'm yeah. just going to distill it down now. It's no, like, it was, so, I see where you were Something about yeah, a ship. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's something. like changing the mindsets of, of everyone who works in the whole entire studio into this idea of regular releases. Yeah. Um, yeah. can be a challenging thing. Like um, rather than just a like. Um, well, it, no, it can. Like on a traditional game, you'll get. Are just a bug curve that goes up and up yep. and up and up and up, right? And then at the end, you've just got to come down this massive kind of cliff face, right? There's another rubbish analogy for you. But, <laughs> um, but the, like our bug count is just like, it's, it's you know, staying yep. low and we're staying on top of those as we move forward, right? You know, we're less than 100 bugs, right? I think like 60, 70 bugs or something at pretty much all times um, compared to getting up to 2,000, 3,000 on a, on a traditional game, yep. right? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very different approach for the for the studio and for the, for the team, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, we've been that's what we've been building up to the last kind of couple of years, really. So, well, I guess every time we do one of those play tests, there's new game features in there, so it's yeah. another opportunity to get feedback as early as possible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. people getting hands on time and telling us what they liked and what they didn't like, and us being able to respond to that even as super early as we are is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah and I th that's, that's, that's true. One of the key things that we've always talked about is once we're out there with players, we want to be regularly delivering features and regularly responding, yeah. right? And it's kind of cool that now we're starting to get into these regular internal play tests. Um, we are actually delivering kind of what we call value, but mm. in each mm. build there's, there's new things to kind of come back and test and play and everything yeah. and we can improve. And it, it's kind of cool that we're getting into that with them already. Yeah, yeah. And the way that the, the team's structured in terms of squads, so we have lots of different <coughs> squads across the team owning different parts of the game, right? And um, the fact that they're all kind of staggered a little bit and working on their own parts, it means actually they naturally do fall in and kind of get delivered mm. regularly rather than all in one kind of bunch. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's coming together pretty nicely, I think. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, did anybody stay up for it? Not the Redmond one, no. Well, that was like, it was 3 a.m. to 5 p.m., wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Bobby was up. <laughs> yeah, Bobby we, was we up. We were all asleep. A, yeah, there was a few people. I'd had an exhausting week. We had some of our marketing kind of partners yeah. in. Um, a lot of discussions, a lot of meetings. And so, yeah, I just needed the, I needed, it was Thursday night, I needed the rest. But it's like, I kind of wrestled with it myself as to whether I should wake myself up or not. And I thought, it's not really scalable that I will <laughs> be in every single playtest ever. And so I'm yeah. going to have to trust that we're going to get data back. You know, we're yeah. going to get telemetry yeah. of how many people played, if there were crashes, if there were problems. We're going to get the feedback, and yeah. it's all going to get filtered through. That's the, that's the level I have to kind of operate at. I can't play everything, and so I that like was my fact, justification I like for the not fact getting that up. Used, uh, so, yeah. Scalable. 
to refer to your personal time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that one of the buzzwords? Is that going on the board? I think it might, have to, on, it might have to go on yeah. the um, micro speak board. Yeah. 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 I'm currently winning. Yeah, you <laughs> definitely are. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That was my justification for not getting up at three in the morning. Anyway, that's how I sold it to myself. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But other than that, there's, I guess, there's lots of other great work happening in the studio with the what referred to last time with the loop. So being able to Mm -hmm. follow a treasure map, go to an island, dig up the treasure, carry it back to the ship, and then get that back to an outpost in the world. That's going really well. Mm -hmm. That's feeling great. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we're also starting. Well, recently we started work on world navigation. So the ability to use a compass to navigate through the world and use a map on the ship to find your way through the world. And that's all complementary to that loop of crews working together to sail the ship to a destination and get something of value. So it's uh, pretty cool to start seeing that show yeah. up in playtest. It's awesome. As yeah. opposed to when we had our marketing partners here and they had to navigate through the world via a, this, a yeah. physical ship's map in the world. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it wasn't in the game yet. Same uh, gameplay. Though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just, I didn't have this open during the playtest earlier, so I'm just going, oh, yeah, there, yeah. And there, yeah. Uh-huh. That went well, though, I think, that, that, that playtest that we had, because just anecdotally, just talking to people afterwards um, and people saying, you know, all the different tangents they went, they went off on when they went, you know, they were, you know, taking a chest back to their ship and then they saw another ship come and try and take it from them and, you know, things like that. Just all those things that, um, uh, you know, the emergent stories that people are having. Um, yeah, just getting a lot of... Uh, initial feedback from people when it's been yeah. going yeah it just really introduces a completely it. new way to play yeah mm-hmm. really new yeah. motivations new goals and that's just that's great right that's more and more of that stuff we want right yeah, so, yeah. um uh yeah very refreshing to play that yes so. we we got we got sorry so we count one right now mm-hmm. we got to the the island we found treasure mm-hmm. took it back to the ship but then saw another ship kind of moored in the bay so i kind of realized well they're they're probably on the island hunting for treasure as well. So we secured our treasure on the ship and then went to go find them. Wait for them to find it, obviously. Oh, we did the same, but we took their ship. So we just were (laughs) sailing to... I wonder if that was me. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) That's cool. There's there's the term that always gets thrown about, a water cooler moment. Is that not a thing? Yeah. It's your... um, It's a podcast moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it's a bit eighties, maybe. Yeah, like hanging around, like the, telling the stories of work. But it's like it is the same. Like, you'll always like, especially after we've had an in studio playtest. Like, there's always like people you walk around the studio and say like, oh, like, yeah, and recount your your playtest moments. Yeah. And it's really cool. Like, as the feature set expands, like the de- the stories, like, yeah. In the story, I got. Really. I was just being pinged to the last one, going, "You're being a bit loud." You're shouting a lot. Can you stop shouting? Can you quieten down, please? <laughs> really? It's because Rich Cousins kept shooting me in the face and I was just screaming at him. So, yeah, sorry. Got a bit carried away. So, yeah, like, I was, mine was just me and Andrew Wensley um, on a ship. And just, he was, ve- he was very, very strict on nautical oh. terms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he made me work for the treasure. <laughs> Um, what about you guys? Say up to anything interesting over there? You gonna just I don't. I've got gone go, awkward silence. No, no, well, I, I, if I talk about what we're doing, then people have no reason to stop by the social channels if I tell them what's going up. You could tease. Looking at holiday stuff. We're in a good place with that. So we've got some cool things coming. You said that last time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we've actually decided on what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Important clarification. Yeah, oh, yeah. we have it. a plan now. Last Thomas time we were Cook making catalog. plans. Mm. What? what? You're talking about Thomas Cook catalog. Browsing through his oh, holiday stuff. Oh no, not <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the image I got. Uh, like Christmas. I did as well, Christmas but I couldn't figure star, out no. what you were talking about. <laughs> Sorry, it's not a good joke if you have to explain uh, that. That was too late. Like yeah. the moment had already passed. Um, but and um, okay, and that like bombshell of an end. No, um, we're gonna move. <laughs> we're gonna oh, move dear. on to uh, the next part of our podcast, which is talking to the audio department. We're gonna talk through questions we've had from the community um, relating to the videos that we've released over the past month and get some insight on that. And we'll see you on the other side. Hello and welcome back to Tales from the Tavern, the official Sea of Thieves podcast. And you can see I've got with me here, you may recognise them from their Not latest movie. Can see. Oh yeah, well, well, <laughs> you will be able to hear eventually, but we've got here... Uh, the mystery boys. The, mystery <laughs> <laughs> the crew from the latest movie, uh, Guns of Osiris, uh, Gun Harder. 
and uh, they're going to introduce themselves from left to right as our audio team. Uh, so I'm Guillaume, and I'm a sound designer here on CFUs. I'm Robin, I'm head of music at Rare. Uh, I'm John, I'm the audio director. Awesome. Um, so let's get straight into it. Obviously, like I said before, our, the videos we had uh, this month were all focused around the, the audio department um, and all included these guys here. Um, so um, we've been taking kind of questions, looking at YouTube comments, um, and although there weren't many questions this month, which must have been us doing a really good job of answering everything in the videos. That's right, being uh, hyper-informative. <laughs> so, that's it. Um, I have uh, taken some comments and then we'll kind of answer questions around those. So the first uh, person we're going to go with is Rare Warrington um, <laughs> said on YouTube, um, uh, some looking forward to this. Also, the end track is sublime. Can't wait to hear more. So, Robin, I'm going to direct end this at you. Track of what? I believe they're talking about the end track on the YouTube videos. Oh, oh right, the little melody at the on end. On the end slide. Do, 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 you told me do, 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 a little do, do, fact do. about that I today, did, didn't today you? Today I did, yeah. yeah. So, so a little factoid about that is that is actually my first stab at a theme. Mm. Mm. But I didn't think it was very theme-like, so I, I saved it. Yeah, put it at the end. Save it for the end, slides. <laughs> <laughs> but I still liked it, but it just didn't feel like it. It kind of felt like it didn't really go anywhere, so... I didn't. I don't know. It just didn't feel main themey enough for me. But mm. I quite liked it as a melody and a little motif. So it felt more like you were going off into the distance on your ship. Well, we've both mm -hmm. got it stuck Onto in our adventure. heads, so it's catchy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well. I think um, like we've had like there was three or four comments on these videos on the four videos about the end track. Yeah. Like um, so it's obviously sticking with people. People are liking it. What's um. What are some of the inspirations are in the actual musical themes that we've heard already? We had some in the trailers, and um, I think always with me, it's it's just always try and write a decent tune, a decent melody that kind of gets stuck in people's heads. I think if you can whistle it or hum it, you're onto a sort of the right track. I think with any any kind of music writing, um, and then on top of that, it was just trying to make it piratey and not too perfect, just a bit cranky, creaky, piratey, really. Thank you. I like it. So, like, because um, we went through like a few different iterations of the themes and stuff, and we instrumentation wise, especially. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose it. It's trying to. I suppose it's, it's having a, a decent melody. I think having this, that sort of piratey, non not too perfect, kind of um, vibe to it, but also keeping that rare kind of signature, not taking itself too seriously. The sort of funny bits in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you just want those. I think the thing with the with Sea of Thieves, it's such a, a rich kind of um, subject matter. You can you can go all over the place with the music. I think you can go really moody with it and really kind of creepy, but also quite light hearted as well. And emotional. Like there were some some really nice tracks that I've heard that will be in the game that are quite like yes. tonally quite different like to what yes. we heard already. Yeah. Um, so there's one called currently called Becalmed which is kind of very, I don't know, I suppose it's almost wondrous, I think. Mm. I'd describe it as, I don't know, anybody else want to sort of say what they <laughs> think of it? Or? <laughs> so when we walked I think it's rubbish. <laughs> I hate that <laughs> tune. <laughs> Actually, you didn't like it when we walked into the tavern and it was playing. You said, no, what's that doing playing? No, that was Seek the Dead. We'd like oh. to talk about all this stuff. Okay. Yeah, they, they can't hear it, can they? <laughs> 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 yeah. Was that Seek the Dead, was it? Uh, okay. I thought, oh, that sounds a bit odd, yeah. I know, it sounds um, good. Yeah. It's but a bit yeah, odd because I suppose it's, it's trying to hit these different, these different emotions, um, so that the player can go. Well, I'm, I'm sort of feeling in this mood, so I'm going to play this tune. Yeah, yeah. I think like um, one of the comments I had described around the becalmed one was very kind of Lord of the Rings esque, like epic feeling, like swelling. Yeah, um, oh. it felt kind of like that. Okay. So. I've always had that. When was Becalmed? I haven't, I haven't heard it, so I don't know. Well, yeah, have we, have we announced Becalmed? No, no, but I've heard it. Oh, I heard I it around see. the studio. John's just showing off. <laughs> oh, I've heard it all the time. He knows all the time. All the tunes off the heart. The, like, um, sitting outside Robin's office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like talking about that kind of inspiration, like, I remember like way back when we were creating the trailer for E3 2015. 15. Right, um, yeah. And there, there was that kind of change of like, you know, like taking the tone a little, a little darker. Yes, yeah, because it was kind of. Mm, yeah, yeah, but yeah. 
Very good. Oh, remember. Good yeah. there. Yeah, that's, uh, I do remember that. Yeah, because we were we were a little bit tonally in a different place just before that, and that kind of really solidified where we were going with it. Do you, do you remember? Because we yes, were like, I've... we need to darken that up a little bit because we were a little bit light. Um, you know, it was almost kind of. Just, a, just slightly, wasn't it? it was little, yeah. Maybe a little bit jaunty in places. Yes, just, that's something right. Something that yeah. was maybe felt a little bit too comedic. Mm. Um, but having said that, I think elements of those are creeping back in. But yes, yeah. just in the right kind of yeah. uh, measure. Yeah. I think. I mean, the tune we've currently got on the front end is has like a little piccolo line on it, which is quite fun. But it's the it's over a sort of fairly dark, yeah, brooding kind of sort thing, of riff isn't it, yeah. on a um, nickel harper and. Yeah, it was interesting to see some of the stuff from the 2015 trailer, the original music that was in there, that didn't make it through, kind of making it, it went into the 2016 trailer, because yes. we were ex- we, when we had to extend that out, like for more yeah. gameplay, and eventually kind of made that, in, but instrumentation changed quite We a bit. did, yeah, because it was yeah, it was kind of really soaring strings, wasn't it, and mm-hmm. um, sort of harps and uh, bell trees and a, a sort of magical, almost, mm-hmm. yeah. kind of um, a fantasy sort of sound, I suppose, and we... We sort of took those elements out, but kept those melodies, and then that rammed the hurdy on top of it, and then it was like, oh yeah, it fits now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. what we did, didn't we? Yeah. I just that's remember cool. singing the bit, and you, despite the fact that the words were na 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 na, them having to be stuck up on the wall for everybody to follow along. And you yeah. covered that in tea as well, didn't you? And like properly yeah. aged it. Yeah, awesome. I still have it. Do you? Is that, is that still in your office? I thought you said he covered it in tears. Pirate tea, Yorkshire gold, as it happens. Yeah. <laughs> so we then can move on to um, we did a video called uh, Sounds of the Land and Sea, which I think mm-hmm. it was a strange title we chose because I think it sounds like a Play Days episode. But the, um, <laughs> so, um, the American people probably won't get that, or anyone. <laughs> Like oh, under the age of like, yeah. um, so it's so it's um, who was it? DM twenty one gaming mm-hmm. said on YouTube um, on that video. Always good to see that sound wasn't an afterthought, and the quality of your process truly shows. Mm. And so I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Gail <laughs> in this one. And it's like can. You, you talk us through the process um, of cr- cr- uh, creating a particular like tough sound or like a unique kind of sound effect. Like. Yeah, make it larger than life and adding more character to it. Uh, so it, it sounds more satisfying when you play because you, you expect this feedback when you do like, I don't know, like shooting the cannons or uh, lowering the capstan and you want to hear everything like creaking and, and, and reacting to what you do. But it has to be a lift compared to what's reality hard because it's just boring that's why that's why I say in the video it's just like when you record guns they just literally go bang like there's no character to them and it's like Gilm's job to put all that character in to give it all that kind of you know structure that kind of make it makes it kind of really unique to that gun and makes you feel like awesome when you fire it yeah, so it's it's all those layers put together. Like the cannon is like you got the powder burning, so you got this sort of and then you got the explosion of it, and then you you can hear the recoil of the cannon. So it's all those sounds assembled that make it like whoa. Actually, enough. going going back to the E three video, that's very much what Jamie did for the actual sound design part of that. I mean, obviously we had uh, Robin score going on it, but like we really slowed down. So when the cannon fired, it was very much the fizz slowed down, and then the that, that initial pop uh, and then all the explosion of the gases and all of that sort of stuff we really went into a lot of detail to split that all out and for that to last five seconds as opposed to like that yeah. so it, it was that was quite a, an interesting sort of uh, foray into like looking at it sound like that really because I think it's what you expect to hear rather than what's actually there exactly. right yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can you talk about a particular sound that I know we talked about the Land Rover like one with the uh, capstan um, in the video is there any particular sounds that were kind of like cool to create or what do you mean by cool that's very subjective but uh, <laughs> well, there was, you there find was, cool yeah. there, there was this sound of sometimes the coolest thing is like the most simpler thing you can think of and mm-hmm. that works like the paper towel uh, that Jamie did but the there was also this uh, yeah. dead tree so we, we got a dead tree on some islands and it's creaking depending on the wind speed and it's really hard getting this sound because if you go outside well if the tree is creaking it's not creaking a lot and there will be a lot of wind and you will have the leaves of the trees around um, so I used a plastic bottle 
and I, I twisted it and it made this nice creak, really dry. Uh, and it didn't sound so plasticky and we put it in the game and that, that worked in the rest of the environment. Yeah. That's it's amazing. a nice little detail with everyday object. It's always a bit satisfying doing this. <laughs> you created a, a lovely segue into my next question here, which was, how do you go about making sure that the islands like feel like they're they're alive? So I got some books about wildlife in the Caribbean. <laughs> so I actually researched a bit about what kind of birds. Is I didn't know anything about birds or any sort of exotic wildlife. So I was like, oh, okay, this thing is more nocturnal, and this thing wake up in the morning and it does this and this and this, and with this, it, it was a bit like colors on a palette, and then I could like use them um, on the island. And so each island can have, uh, of each sea can have a different tone to it. So they all sound a bit different. And, and of course, time of the day and wind speed and all our in-game parameters are, are changing those in real so time. So just uh, as the sun comes up at sort of four in the morning, half three, four, then you get the birds really sort of they're quite present that's when they're most present mm. and then they kind of chill out and then the crickets come in and there's that's you know a lot of stuff is happening throughout the day so you go there in the morning go there in the evening go there at night and it's all completely different um but all sort of completely in keeping which is mm. awesome it's great to hear that like um because i never even think about it like that you know that that you have to take in with this kind of open world idea and the kind of day night cycle and different weather conditions like changing. It's like obviously you guys have to tie sound to those different parameters, but it's really cool. I never think of the idea of like if the wind blows hard or the creeks get louder and like, the yes. trees and change. Yeah. That's we that's actually weird. we actually do individual gusts of wind. We know about those gusts and those gusts affect the trees more. Uh, so that when you're stood next to a tree, you hear a in the wind, and you hear the shh go with it actually in the tree, which is super cool. Yeah, they walk together. Yeah. I know, that is amazing. It's <laughs> <yeah. laughs> very cool. Brutish Vulgarian, yeah. <laughs> apparently, on YouTube said, this video made me love your game. I think hearing cannon through the water from the lower deck could be trippy sounding. <laughs> so I guess he's talking about how the sounds sound different depending on where in the ship you are, which we covered in the video, didn't we? Yeah. There's yes. something I notice when I play. I really like going. It sort of sounds almost like you're in a bubble. That's exactly it. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, the that claustrophobic feel, because um, you know, imagine being in the deck of a ship with all the cannons going off, water leaking in. It's like a pretty hostile place, and mm. we just we kind of we were trying to get that feeling. And I think cutting a lot of the outside sound was like a really good starting point. I think we just sort of started carving sounds out rather yeah. than adding stuff in. And that was a really good starting point when we were just thinking like, ooh. And then we started thinking about what would the water sound like down here? And, uh, you know, how would the creeks sound? And like mm. mixing all that stuff together. We've put a lot of iteration time into that because uh, the boat is hugely important. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the core of what we do. So like we're putting a lot of effort into making sure that sounds awesome. And so, I, I think it also when when even when you're not in battle, it sounds really cozy as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's quite a nice place to just hang out because because of all the creeks and the yeah, yeah. It, without all the you know just ambience and atmosphere yes. going outside, you're just dropping down. It's like because when you're yeah. down in that brig deck, it, it you know you get all the sort of the, the noises, but they're all affected. But they're not filtered noises of what's upstairs. They're actually unique sounds to that deck of that ship. So all of the different classes of sounds, the creaks, uh, so the water outside, it's all uniquely uh, made in our uh, digital audio workstations for that purpose. It's not kind of just we're filtering other sounds. And we've got that for each of the decks of the ship. So as you come out uh, from the brig deck into the map deck into the middle deck, then you kind of get a little bit more sense of the outside, but you're still quite enclosed. And then as you go up the final stairs, you kind of hear all the outside sounds coming in. And it's quite a, an amazing moment, especially when you're hurtling along the ocean and you can kind of hear all the bow splashes. You can hear the internal ones. And then as you come out, you just sort of see all the VFX and hear it all. And it's really nice. It's a, it's a, it's a good wow moment, I think. Mm. I remember like um, at home, sitting um when i was able to sit with the surround sound and stuff just quiet at night with the, the tv on myself and just uh the ship sailing along at night and just hearing the water just gently lap when you're in like a like a low where the waves are riding quite low on the side yeah. of the ship and you're yeah. just hearing it gently lap and it's super relaxing like yes. when you're just there yourself <laughs> hearing the boat slightly creak and stuff and the sails kind of bellowing over the water it's, it's amazing like the audio experience i think is fantastic it's cool actually because you can be from that very choppy sea and we've obviously the the ocean noise kind of ramps up when when it's really choppy and then you can kind of put the sails up and drift into calm sea you can hear all the sea just sort of really 
really calm down. And then obviously you can jump off the boat, go under the water, swim around a bit, and then go out by the, the shoreline. And then that all sounds very, you know, sort of on holiday kind of vibe. So it's really relaxing. You know, if you did nothing and there was nobody else shooting at you, it would be quite a relaxing game. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was yourself that wrote a lot of that software for the below deck stuff, was it? Like, it was, yeah, and the ocean sort of stuff as well. So mm. the ocean's a really complex object, actually, because you've got uh, it changing from shoreline um, to sort of rough sea. That's one kind of axis. And then you've got your distance from it, so you can, it can drop off and it can be a big sort of wash noise. So when you're up on a distant hill, you can hear the ocean. So that's still got to work. And you've got underwater, uh, you've got swimming around in it, you've got wading in it and splashing around. So there's all these different things that we have to bolt together. And then you go, oh, the sea sounds just normal. You, know, you, do, you barely notice it because it's just right and you, you, we hopefully do it right so that people don't go, oh, that sounds a bit wrong. So it's, yeah, it's quite tricky, but there's a lot to it, certainly. Yeah, that's cool. And so probably to answer this guy's question, like we do have cannonballs, the sounds of cannonballs firing underwater. Like, Yes, we do. Well, under deck at the moment, the water sound is we do filter a lot of that stuff. Um, I don't think we, there's not a specific sound for when you're firing underwater, is there? No, but the water will filter the, the impact yep. of the cannon if it hits your ship. So if, you're, yeah, if, you're, if a cannonball comes past you in the water... There will be, we haven't got it yet, but there will be because we've got all of the kind of necessary stuff for it. If you're underwater and a cannonball go past you, you will hear that kind of saving private run as it goes past you and whatnot, which is That's sweet. Which, which would be cool. Yeah, and <laughs> but but if you were below on the bottom deck and you're, uh, your ship was filling up with water yes. and there was cannons firing oh, up yes. above you. Yeah, we've you? already got that in. Yeah. That's, that sounds super cool. Essentially, when you're in the map deck, you get the kind of, you get a little bit of that contact mic because obviously there's rollers on the bottom of the cannon. So when they roll back, you get all of that sort of contact stuff from the wood and plus a load of kind of acoustic, you know, like, <sighs> you know, reverby type stuff. And then when you go down to brig deck, you get less of that sort of, that contact noise and you just get more of the big washy sound and it just, yeah, it's... It's pretty epic. You, you know, when you're sort of down there repairing and you can hear the cannons going off and you can hear the cannons on the close other ship as well. So if it comes quite close, you can hear them firing as well and it's sort of reverberating around your deck. It's very, very cool. That's cool. So we we had a video. It was our first short haul video. I think that was back in oh, September. August. Was it August? Or July. Yeah, I was looking at them this morning. August. <laughs> really? August wow. it was, yeah. Oh, on God, the instruments. It's been that long. Yeah, yeah. instruments. Yeah. Um, so... Obviously, you guys had a huge part to play in the creating of the, the instruments and, and how they work. Um, the, the software behind syncing those up, was that, was that difficult? Like, was that a difficult process? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. There was nothing in the engine uh, to do the things that we needed to do. And then we'd already prototyped it. So I knew our audio middleware could handle it because um, we'd already prototyped it and we had a fully working thing. But that was in a completely different language. So putting it into Unreal and, and C Sharp, sorry, C++ was just, it was, it was very, very tricky. It took me about, I think, two months, and then I had to basically parachute in a senior coder to finish it off because I was struggling with the last bit that synced everything up and looked at net relevancy and all these things that I don't really understand. So he came in and sort of put his arm around me and just went, it's all right. <laughs> so took it off me and then like two days later it was totally working and it's, uh, it's stayed working ever since mm -hmm. yes. apart from one server crash just before E3 uh, which was my fault technically uh, but they, they fixed all that up and since then I think it's been working in really well that's amazing and when we think about the parts for that like yeah. how many is, what are the different parts we play because we never in that video we really never got to go in depth with like talking about how the actual system works mm. um, so can we so if you um, say if you if you got the hurdy and you start playing, you will play um, the lead part, and then if Guillaume picks up the concertina and joins in, he'll he'll support he'll play a backing to my lead part. I never noticed that. Mm -hmm. and, if, and, and then uh, and if John picks up another instrument, <laughs> are we talking about any other instruments yet? Or? Um, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> Another so, a, a an other instrument. Oh, if it was a, another instrument. <laughs> yeah. Then that would that would also play backing. But if I if I decide to drop out, then Guillaume will take on the melody, mm. and I can if I join back in, I will then be backing him. So you could as if you wanted, you could go, I'll play it for eight bars. You play it for eight bars, and you know we'll just 
riff off each other like that. That's cool. Um, Our audio intern, Matt, is really good at that. We had a basically a jam, him and I, when we were doing some other instruments, which I shan't mention. Um, but Say we, hypothetically some sort of percussion instrument. Mate, a, well, actually, this was a, a, a more a, a fretted, a fretted oh, stringed instrument. Oh, right. okay. so, uh, the, but we were, we were kind of recording some new versions of that. Uh, and he was literally bringing in the melody part on his fretted stringed instrument, and then he was dropping out, and I was doing the concertina part. So it was really cool. We had this good interplay. So I think good musicians would be able to make it sound awesome. Yeah, you know, bring well, in the drums. Most people would be able to go count a melody, you know, for that. Yeah, one, yeah. You drop out and I'll drop Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. I mean, but the other thing that's amazing I mean, is it's the syncing, but also the distance on it as well. So you can wander away from each other. Yeah, yeah. So, so the mix changes the whole time. All, it's constantly yeah. on in your surroundings. I've always so, wanted to be able to like sail up to an island and someone like, for example, Devil's Red, someone's just up at the very top, just standing like you just hear it at night time, yeah. like in the distance, or be really, like that kind of. But if, if you could hear it, you could play along with it as well. So if, when they're in earshot, that's the kind of thing to say. Oh, I can play along. I can play oh, that's that. pretty sweet. sweet. Which, so they'd be able to hear you in the distance and vice versa. Be very cool. Um, and, if, and, I, and if you know, you uh, had, a, had had a little drink and then decided to play, you know. Like, <laughs> Might sound a bit different, potentially. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's uh, potentially, potentially, <laughs> or if you fall off the boat, <laughs> go underwater. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Look at that sound different. That would be a good thing to do. That would mm, be a good thing. To okay, do. be interesting. <laughs> the um, so <clears throat> again back to themes and, yep. and stuff like that. People kind of they often expect a particular theme to be tied to a game or a movie. Mm -hmm. um, but we've talked a lot about this, like kind of the music being like helping these emergent stories, and we don't want to really get in the way of like insinuating anything, any particular thing is happening in the game yeah. um, with music. So where can we expect to see themes and stuff pop up? I mean, mm. we've, had, we've had them in the trailers. Yes. Um, we've had them in that. And we've had them, obviously we have our YouTube videos, and you can imagine them being on the front end of anything. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, um, so in the in the back in the bar, whatever the word pirate tavern. Is tavern. The thing we're in right now. That's the one I was searching for. <laughs> oh yeah. <Totally. laughs> um, yeah. So you'll be able to hear versions of them there that you'll then be able to go out and play. Um, so there's themes there. Um, I don't, it's how much detail we go into here. Um, if there's a there's def if there's definitely something happening, we will be playing a theme to support that. Just, yeah. We go. It, it's all about um, what emotion the player's feeling, mm -hmm. and we don't want to be inferring anything that they're not feeling. So, but if we can go, well, if this is def this this is ap actually happening. This scenario is going on right now. Then there will be a theme for that yeah. Yeah. event. Yeah, even you can imagine in a quest, for example, uh -huh. like. Um, Possibly like when you find the treasure or some other yep. list. It's more, it's more like a sting in that situation. Yeah, it is. It's but it's, I mean, I suppose it's, yeah, the sting. It still has a theme to it, right? Yeah. You can, you could. That, that is essentially the sting, isn't it? And if you start a quest, there'll be something to. Yes. Un underpin that, you know, there's a, a definite kind of okay. We're going. We're going to set sail. We're going to go on an adventure. So. Yeah, there's very, very few, if any, moments really apart from the start of a game where the control is taken away from the player so it mm. is like it's often in those moments that we can try and kind of inject it mm -hmm. with but there certainly will be there are enough events going on in the game that we can we know that the player is going to be feeling a certain or ought to be feeling a certain way mm. so the de design are really fine with us going okay uh, uh, we can play something there that it evokes a certain emotion uh, but as long as we're out very quickly and you know we've got we've, we're very bookended and we've mm -hmm. got to make sure that we don't sort of step on toes but, but there are events that happen around death around respawning around this that and the other that we can put sound on and put music on to to sort of convey the right emotion yeah. and there's, I mean there's a lot of the, there's a lot of the themes that turn up all over the place in different forms so there's the shanties but there's also the sort of the music that drifts in that, that sounds like it's just wafting in on the air. Mm -hmm. You'll wafting. hear wafting. <laughs> wafting in. <laughs> like a wafer. Um, you'll hear those themes mm. embedded in that as well, and you, like characters 
And those themes change as well, don't they? On the if you're on the island, they're different. Uh, if you're on the deck of the ship, they're different. And then you and know, if it's at night time, it's it, different. Yes, yeah. so they 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 you know, they're constantly changing, mm. and there's loads of them. So you've just got this wonderful kind of delivery of sort of. Uh, there's the music know. constantly firing off. Yes, because um, we were really the, the the point about it was that we were trying to get our tone across in the music and to have enough of that music. So if you're just doing sort of very deliberate events there can be quite a long time between these events you know mm. so is it, what we're saying we don't want to deliver any music of course we're not we, we still want to deliver the tone and give that triple a kind of quality uh because that's really hugely important to what we're trying to get across so you know for me it's it's really important that we deliver music constantly ish you know within these uh, yeah I mean, and the other thing the thing for me is it's what i don't my, one of my book bears is that kind of repetitiveness mm. Mm. If I say to somebody, "Oh, I'm, what do you do for a living?" I'm, I write music for games. Oh, you do all that repetitive kind of annoying music. And it's, and that's obviously they're clearly talking about games from probably 1987. Mm. But <laughs> it is a it is kind of a bit of a go on a level, level tune starts and then loops around mm. indefinitely till you leave the level. Um, so we're sort of taking more of a granular approach with it, where the it's it's chopped up into sections and they kind of fade in and fade out and randomly between each each one. There's not it's not a set order and it can just come and go and if you decide that I'm going to play a tune on that my, my uh, hurdy they'll just sort of fade away while you do that mm -hmm. so there's always constantly some supply of music yeah it's kind of <coughs> tying that the emergent kind of gameplay into that emergent mm -hmm. sound I guess that emergent mm. like soundscape and changing around and can I like finally to tie this up? I don't have this written down, but I just thought about it there. But the um... <laughs> Guillaume's hair. <laughs> yes, that, that was a big talking point after the last video. Yeah, like people. It wasn't people just us; it was in the comments too. It was in the comments. Well, it makes me carry a brush around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Look after it. Every so often. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, you used to have long hair. Yeah. yeah. Oh, back in the day. Yeah, curly okay. as well. Mm. Long ginger. <laughs> <laughs> not tempted to grow it out again. No, I'm, I am, but there's no chance of that happening. <laughs> Just my wife. Uh, Come on, Ruben. Uh, okay, okay yeah, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My husband's not allowed to grow a moustache because he looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. He won't listen to this. He knows. He knows. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think like <laughs> that was a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> when we. Like we know that the game is like it's set in a fantastical world, so there is that sense of like kind of um, like well, fantastical about about things. But we haven't we haven't seen much of that through the gameplay. But are you guys starting to think about that when it comes to sound? I know there's a absolutely. I mm -hmm. know there's um, some elements I've seen a particular instrument um, in your department that is very cool. Yes, already yeah. recorded that. Ooh. Yeah. Way too stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, I think that's. Well, that, like, that's I, I tweeted a picture of that. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. one? We did a little the water, water phone. phone. The ghost bowl thingy, as I call it. Yeah, ghost bowl thingy is a good description. Ghost bowl thingy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really creepy. I like it. Is. it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've seen some hints. Obviously, the Comic Con panel that uh, Ryan showed, we showed some of the kind of ghost elements yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's imagine. where I'm using it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we can imagine things like that. But what about yourself, Guillaume? Were you looking into more of those sounds, or? Well, some of the sounds, of course, you can't you can't just decide to make them fantastic because they, it's, it serves no purpose. Like f we have basic fully like footsteps and cannons and things that are that existed at some point mm -hmm. uh, or in some form, um, and which are not fantastic. And I think that there is a whole um, world of like you know. Um, Ghost ship and mermaids and and magic and there there is all this pirate folklore, um, which everybody ex expect also. Uh, so we're, we're thinking about this uh, and we prepared some um, things already. I can't. Mm. I can't no, no, like no, yeah. we're keeping <laughs> an air of mystery. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry. It's like I mean we've we've seen mermaids in our E three two thousand sixteen trailer. We've seen oh yes, uh, and stuff yes. Like that. So they're they're all out there. But it's just interesting to think about like taking. How we make, I mean, obviously, our mermaids, when you see them in the trailer, look quite different to like it's not like the little mermaid or anything. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it'll be quite interesting to see where we go 
in regards to sound and that. Um, Can you figure out what a mermaid sounds like? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, it's, we've, but it's not Ariel. No, yeah. We already kind of know. We've got we've got some stuff certainly uh, in the prototype that's that's in. Uh, we've got the sounds into the game. They just they're just waiting to be sort of hooked up to that stuff at the moment. So we yeah we know exactly how those are going to sound um, and the music and the music. Yeah, mm. you heard that? Yet? You heard I haven't that? heard that one yet. No, I need to pop along you after this. You haven't heard everything, have you? Yeah. I thought I had to. Did you just like come and hang out in your corridor yeah. a lot? You can come and listen to it. But the um, actually the, the way we've done that with the music is very much uh, for the. Ghost ship. Have we, have we announced the ghost ship? We, we, yes, we have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Good. Yeah, for the ghost <laughs> ship um, and the mermaid, uh, for those both of those things, the way we deliver the music is very, uh, it's very sort of procedural almost, isn't it? It's sort mm-hmm. of procedurally triggered. So we've got some stuff that plays, and we keep changing it every so often, and we've got limits of like how the minimum time and the maximum time, and we kind of mix it all up. So everything you're getting, you can listen. To, you know, we've listened to it uh, whilst we were messing around. We got it running on the island. Um, we were just playing it for a good hour, and you know this probably is, is probably about ten minutes of content in there. And just because it changes and all these things are layered with it all differently and randomly changing, yeah. it's, it's just so mixed up. And we've done that yeah. for the mermaid, uh, the the ghost ship, ghost and ship. the front end. We will be doing it because the front end, you know, we've just got a linear piece in at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, but we're going to. Well, that's that the plan up. with everything. I think the, from the island stings and the, yes. the, the sort of little yep. pieces that play. We're just trying to keep that rule of we'll always try and do something where it randomly, random ni- r- rises. <laughs> randomly randomizes. <laughs> randomly <laughs> randomizes. Yeah. Um, exactly. exactly it. Yeah. And the ghost ship is a pretty good one yeah. because it's um it it the chord whichever chord a section finishes on the next section will start on the same chord so it can cross play but it will hold and then on top of that there's there's layers of instruments that play different melodies that are correct to the chord that the music's currently on. And do you think right. do you think I got a one note or anything modern about how to uh, hook this up? I didn't. I got a, a little uh, Robin Bingland factoid. I got a little little sheet of pad of paper uh, <laughs> with little F sharps, G, <laughs> this that and the other for number one. Number two is this that and the other. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we hooked it all, and it was right as well. It was perfect. perfect. Was it tea stained? No, nope. no, 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 no. <laughs> no. He's a professional. I mean, come on. No, <laughs> but it's the, it, when we were sitting there listening to it, because I, I played a load of wild stuff in on the Herdy, mm-hmm. and I just. Basically, put it in record and just played, and then all this kind of in key and all that sort of stuff, and do that kind of thing. And then pick there the bits a, I want. There was a water phone and all sorts as well. Water phone, there? there's, yeah. there's a reverse celeste, and there's oh, a yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the reverse celeste is one where it's okay, if it's on this chord, you can pick any of these notes. Yes, that's right. If yeah. it's on this chord, and so it's all mapped out so that it will just randomly play, and it may play two, it, maybe yeah, three. You may play some together as well, so you might get a nice chord, you might just get a single note. Single, so it's sort of reverse. Nip, Yep. Sort of stuff. Yeah, that's um, cool. Fair and then the Herdy lines on top of that. So the, besides the backing, which is kind of doing its own thing as well, all those bits that are trigger at those points will be correct to the chord that the backing's on. Mm. I'm explaining yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we were sort of listening to it and it's like, oh, just getting surprised by something coming in. Because you just forget, you record so much stuff, there's so much stuff sat there. It's just going off and it has a life of its own after it's left Yes, yeah. me. It's kind of just doing its own thing then. There was one Sorry, that way, you, you did a little refrain from the main sort of theme, didn't you, for, mm-hmm. uh, for one of the kind of little layers. And you, it just popped out one time. We're like, oh, there's that, you know, it's like just got a recognisable that little thieves thieves melody. Mm-hmm. But you lovely. Wait, you just wait really... an hour and not hear it. Yes, hear it. absolutely, yeah. That's always really cool, for, especially for fans if they're trying to listen yeah. to that yeah, sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I thought I'd finish off on something that was, since this is, of course, the 31st of October and it's Halloween today. It's Halloween today, yeah. isn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Yeah. Up to speed now. Yeah. I thought you were going to get us to do some sort of Halloween thing. Yeah. <laughs> sing a Halloween theme song. Yeah. 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 We did. Yeah. We did. We did. We something last year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know we're going to share it again because it's just it's really really good. It'd be interesting. Is it just it's a Scottish bizarre. thing where the really when you go round doors asking like essentially a trick or treat, they make you come in and you have to do something for it. Like you have to, like say a poem or a, on, sing a song. No, or, that's that's definitely doesn't happen around it. You know, Hang usually on, the kids go to the door. Scott. And oh, then in they Scotland. get a bunch of sweets. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Or oh, if they no, come you to my to... house, I pretend I'm not there. Oh, <laughs> oh you're one of those. Eh? I'm one of those. Do you leave a bowl of sweets <laughs> outside though? No. Don't you? No. Oh, <laughs> that's that's just wrong, isn't it? Really? Throw monkey nuts from the window. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I'm not that mean. Honestly, my my kids would be crying. I'm sorry. Okay, well, that's another <laughs> month over. 
I've not come across well in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's another month over, and I'd like to thank uh, these guys for obviously um, helping us out here at the end, and hopefully they give you a little insight into into the audio department. Um, Obviously, if you're listening uh, to this on any reputable podcast mm-hmm. apps, um, you can then check us out um, on YouTube. We, we have the 4K video up there for you to look at if you want to see okay. Robin's pores. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, you can obviously expect this uh, monthly and we, we will continue into next month with our short haul and, and inside stories. Um, and hopefully tune in again for the next podcast. And just to remind everyone, hashtag Tavern Talk on Twitter or Facebook if you want to ask any questions or mm-hmm. put any questions to, to the panel. Yeah, and thank you very much for joining and thank you very much for listening. Bye. 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 Cheesy wave. You have to do cheesy waves. <laughs> do it. Bye. Bye. Bye.